Hi, my name is Kathy Moore. I am the executive director of the Barnum Museum here in Bridgeport, Connecticut, and I'd like to set the record straight about the real story of P.T. Barnum. When people hear the name P.T. Barnum, they automatically think of the circus, and yes, that's absolutely true. But believe it or not, the greatest show on earth, the circus, was Barnum's retirement project. He was already well established in New York City and the world with his American Museum in New York City in the 1840s. So when people often think about Philip Carlyle in The Greatest Showman movie, they wonder, oh, is he a real character? And interestingly, yes and no. He was kind of a combination of a lot of people that work with Barnum. James Bailey, one of his best friends, Horace Greeley. So when you mash up all of these wonderful characters that were part of Barnum's life, you kind of come up with a Zac Efron. My favorite scene is the bar scene where Barnum and Philip Carlyle are negotiating with each other and they're banging down shots and the choreography is great. Early on when they were making the movie, um, we got a phone call uh, because they wanted, set producer wanted to know some information about Barnum Arms, Barnum's Bar across the street from the American Museum. Well, across the street from the American Museum was St. Paul's Church, which is still there today, and Barnum didn't own a bar. Barnum was one of the country's greatest temperance champions of the time, and he would not allow drinking or smoking at all in any of his establishments or any of his venues. If you wanted to drink or smoke, you had to leave the museum and pay full price to come back in. There are a lot of people that do know that Barnum's American Museum burnt down, which is absolutely true. But in the film, you're taking on this journey of, you know, Barnum running into the burning building to save, you know, Philip Carlyle. The truth is actually Barnum was a general assemblyman for the state of Connecticut and he was in Hartford, Connecticut on the floor of the Capitol taking down Vanderbilt and the railroad schemes when a note was handed to him that the American Museum was completely in flames. It actually did burn to the ground but it did take Barnum a full day to get down to New York to actually see the museum in ruins. Bringing Jenny Lynn to America at that moment in time was perhaps one of the riskiest business ventures ever taken in entertainment. There was no such thing as opera in America at that time. So Barnum had to prepare the public mind, introduce people to what was going to be one of the most fascinating you know, experiences they could possibly have in theater. But nobody here knew what opera was, so Barnum ingeniously promoted Jenny Lind by her character as being, you know, wonderfully gracious and generous, a blessing to America. And that's what captivated Americans at that moment in time. Not so much her singing until they heard her. So when they ended the relationship, they basically ended their business agreement and their contract. There was no kiss, there was no flash photography, there was nothing that really suggested something Something scandalous, all made up really in the 20th century. My favorite character in the film would have to be James Gordon Bennett. Bennett was actually an adversary of Barnum's early on in his life, going back into the 1830s, uh, where he and Barnum would constantly go at each other to one up, you know, each other's ideas and publicity and what can I do better than you, always back and forth. So in the film, that character is actually more real than people think. Um, they had probably a friendly rivalry. They needed each other. Barnum is also known for humbug. Um, it's a word that actually means something a little different today than it did during Barnum's time. But Barnum's definition of humbug is management, tact, to take an old truth and put it in an attractive form. And wonderfully, that's precisely what The Greatest Showman did. It took Barnum's story 
but made it interesting and exciting and relevant for audiences today. That is precisely what P.T. Barnum would have done. They took 50 years or more of P.T. Barnum's life. Life is messy, life is complicated, and they compress it into a wonderful two hours of joyful music and singing and dancing that everybody could enjoy today. And that's precisely what P.T. Barnum would have loved about it. He would have loved to see that people are still in theaters singing, you know, all of these great songs and keeping his memory alive. The show will go on. So my name is Kathy Marr. It was great talking to you. Um, please, if you want more information about P.T. Barnum, go to our website, barnum-museum.org. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, or come to the museum, you know, and see us. See some of the wonderful artifacts that we have that P.T. Barnum really owned and the carriages that Tom Thumb really drove around in. We'd love to see you. Thanks so much for watching.